please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and we'll be all set. Hit that subscribe button, man. 2,000 subs. Let's get it. The video comes from the content creator, Corey Jones, and he discusses what led to his divorce. Welcome everybody. As you can see, this is a different type of video for my channel. The mood is kind of different. I want to set the mood for this video because this is a story, um, a time of my life that I've really never talked about ever. You know, this story is something that I withheld to myself for so long. Um, and you know, some people know, and then some people don't. The people that do know, know, and the people that don't, don't. And you know, you kind of make assumptions. Nobody ever knew the full story of what happened. If you've been a subscriber and supporting me since forever, so since the start of this channel, that would be 2017, you probably already knew that I was with this one woman at one time, at one point in my life. She was in some of my vlogs and things like that, videos. Mm -hmm. And I took those down from my channel and you know, it was an abrupt, ending to those type of vlogs it was a bro around her and things like that um if you're new here you probably don't even know because i don't have any pictures up i don't have any videos up or anything i kind of try to erase that that side of my life you know i want to be transparent here so in 2017 um i got married i got married to this girl that i've been with throughout college you know what i'm saying mostly through college um, and we was together for a while, you know, went through college together, a little bit of our adulthood as well. And, you know, decided to jump the broom and be bonded forever. You know what I'm saying? Everything felt right. Everything felt like, you know, it was the right thing to do, the next step to do. Um, you know, since we've been together for a good little minute, um, you know, people kind of looked up to us as that black couple in school and that couple that just stood through everything, you know what I'm saying? With that being said, you know, we decided to get married, you know. Um, honestly, was that the best move? <laughs> At the time, it felt like it. We was renting, just trying to find a home that we liked, it, liked to rent until we bought a home, but we ended up renting a home. And um, of course that was in the town that my alma mater is in. So if you know, you know. Um, so we, you know, moved in together. Everything is going good. And, you know, um, you know, once we got married, there was, before we got married, there really was never no hiccups or anything like that. At least that I didn't suspect any, there wasn't really any red flags to me. You know what I'm saying? Um, I think the only red flag that was in me was like, I was like, yo, you know, we've been born and raised here, went to school here. We really need to move from this state in order to be prosperous, you know, in order to make a name for ourselves, build build wealth and, and all that good stuff. There wasn't many opportunities in South Carolina for anyone recently graduating. Work front desk, became assistant director of rooms very shortly after that. Still wasn't paying that much. Ended up working at the University of South Carolina as an admissions counselor. And I started off making $28,000, guys. $28,000. A whopping $28,000 there. And that was a struggle because I loved the job. And I loved what I did there, but it wasn't enough to provide for me and her, even though she had a job, but it was still kind of like a little bit of a struggle. So I think that kind of no doubt play into what happened in the marriage, maybe. But those are conversations that you don't really have um, beforehand. Should. You kind of just going through life together. And if Should, someone uh... is for you, they're going to be for you no matter what your salary is, no matter this and that, the connection that y'all have really you know, um, should be strong enough to look past that. But anyway, like in a perfect world, yes. In reality, no. All finances and financial expectations should be talked about and discussed ahead of time. But this gentleman sounds like he was super young when he got married. So let's fast forward. So, yeah, um, we ended up getting married, you know, um, in October of 2017 jumped the broom everything went well um and it, it was good you know what i'm saying but um 
let's fast forward to the beginning of 2018. So not even a year, not even barely six months in. Um, you know, it was around Mother's Day. Um, and, you know, her family came to the house. We grilled a couple of my family members and friends came to the house. We grilled out, had a good time. And, you know, it was just a good vibe. You know what I'm saying? Being around friends, family, you're in your home. Nice day outside, sunny. There's not a care in the world right now, at least I for me. It. And I always looked at her as a person that I can trust. I always looked at her as someone that I wouldn't have to worry about. Someone that had my best interest at heart. Um, always had the utmost respect for her because, like... I knew that she cared for me. That's 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 how I truly felt. But fast forward throughout that day, you know, family was still there. And then it's getting down to the evening. You know, I'm outside grilling with her dad and stuff like that. We're having a good time chopping it up, shooting the breeze, you know, things that family do. And um, as the day went on, her family decided to stay the night with us and we was going to go to breakfast in the morning. OK. Um, so the night is winding down. Everyone is going to bed. Me and her go to bed. And, you know, at this point, I'm exhausted. It's like probably 1130 p.m. Exhausted. Been grilling, been cooking, been socializing all day. Just okay. tired. So she was falling asleep. I was falling asleep. But I was kind of tossing and turning a little bit in and out. So I think I fell asleep around like 12-ish, woke back up around one because I just kept hearing bzz, 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 ding, ding, like messages. So that's not good. One, one a.m. Usually she's not texting her girlfriends or anything like that because they got mans and husbands and stuff too. They don't be texting like that. So I was like, but oh well. So I kind of turned over a little bit and you know, I wanted to try to go back to sleep. So I went back to sleep, tried to, and still heard it. So I kind of turned back over and kind of cuddled her a little bit. And then as I was cuddling a little bit, I kind of saw her phone. And then I saw a, a, a man's name on there that I'd never seen before. Uh oh. So I was like, 1.30 a.m., a man's yep. name that I don't even know. This don't even sound, this don't even sound right. But I didn't press the issue right then and there. Until I kept hearing the bzz, 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 ding, oh. ding, ding. So now I was like, yo, like, who you texting this late? And I could tell that she was kind of startled a little bit because she probably thought I was asleep or in and out of sleep or in a deep sleep. So that's what she was like, nobody, do do do. I was like, nah, who you texting? Because I know she would tell me instantly who she texting. Yeah. So, um, and then she wouldn't tell me. So I was like, let me see your phone. Wow. And I don't, I've never been this type of guy to, to go through a phone. I'm not that type of guy like either. So I was like, let me see your phone. Because this don't even sound right. She was like, why? She kept questioning why. So I just took the phone. So I was like, boom. Looked at the phone. There was a dude in there. And they was just having this conversation. Looked like they was having a conversation throughout the whole entire day. And I was looking mm -hmm. and I was seeing things like, I'm going to bring you a plate and this and that. And all kinds of stuff. And I was like. What? Who is this cat, yo? Like, this is crazy. So then she got upset because I guess I caught her. So I was like, yo, who? They always do. They get mad when they get mad when they get caught and they get mad at you. They always react like that. Who is this? Boom, boom, boom. And this is where, this is where it really got me. She was like, I was going to tell you. I was like. Bang! Bang! It's good! never fails man tell me what what exactly was you gonna tell me you know what i'm saying so then since family is in the house we decided to go outside because we didn't want to make a, a ruckus and all this inside since family was staying in the night so we went outside talked walked the block boom 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 and it's just she was just telling me about the situation this and that this and that and the weird thing about this is I never suspected that any of this would ever happen. But I realized once she started hanging out with these new friends of hers, all of her friends was married, but all of them had bad marriages. Mm. Either the wife was cheating on the husband or the yeah. husband was cheating on the wife. And I was like, 
she shouldn't be hanging with them, but I can't control who she hang with. Like she just got these new group of friends where. I disagree. Yes, that's true. You can't control who your wife hangs with, but you can draw the line in the sand at any given point at any given time and set the expectations. If your your wife is a friends with slowers, what do you think your wife is likely to be? Birds of a feather flock together. If you see your wife hanging with someone or groups of people who all have questionable character, bring it up. Everybody has something going wrong in their marriages, and yet we're newlywed, and she's seeing this and that, and they're probably influencing her to do this. So all kind of stuff like this is going through my head. And um, it just made me realize, like, this is crazy. This, this is not the end of it, but at that moment, I was like, this is crazy. Like, I really couldn't process anything. So after we had a little walk, went back in, went to sleep. Woke up that morning. And then reminder as well, his in-laws is over, so he's finding all this out at 1 o'clock in the morning. He can't even snap like he wants to because <laughs> the people's in the house. Now, by the way, I'm not laughing at this gentleman whatsoever. This is not a funny topic. I just want to make sure I say that. If you, if you see me giggling in this video, I'm not laughing at him. And I just had a bad feeling in my gut. And we were supposed to go to breakfast with her parents. You know what I'm saying? I didn't feel right going to breakfast. Oh, I bet. I had to fake like I was sick because the situation really threw me for a loop. You know what I'm saying? I get it. But see, I'm one of those dudes. I'm just built a little bit differently. I can't fake none of this. So if that would have happened at 1.30 in the morning, her family would have heard us have it out at 1.30 in the morning. In my house? Nah, man. So my mom couldn't make it to the Mother's Day um, cookout. So we ended up going to um, my mom's spot in Sumter. So had to fake the funk there. Had to fake the funk like everything was going good. Car ride, not really talking. On the way back, talked a little bit about what was going on. Not and then deal. we got back in the home. And then that's when we really had the conversation later that night. Okay. Where, you know, like, okay, what's up? What happened? Who this dude is? What's the relationship? How y'all know each other? Boom, boom, boom. Come to find out, I remember about three months before me and her started like going to the gym together things like this and she was telling me about this trainer that had this new program and she was like yo we should go to this camp since we're going to the gym it'll be cool for us to go as a couple boom 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 i was like all right cool never ended up going but i guess she continued to talk to the trainer so the guy was a trainer and uh and, and and so they kind of had a little bit of history and he knew that she was married. And of course, dudes don't really care like that. It's up to the woman to neglect that. So I can't even be mad at the dude. Like I'm mad at the disrespect for him to come at a married woman, but I can't be mad at him because he can only do what she allows. 100, 100% correct. I've always felt the same way in these types of situations. I'm not going to be mad at the man for doing what a man do. He's just trying to get laid. The woman is the one who allows that to happen. Men just want to be laid. It's like, boom. We knew they was. We got to try to get through this. You know what I'm saying? The old me in this situation would have been like, nah, it's dead right then and there. But I was like, since we newly was and since we just got married and since we cho since you're supposed to try to work through things. Just got married, by the way. I'm going to try to work with you. So I was like, look, we can get through this, but I'm going to need you to delete this guy off social media. I'm gonna need you to delete the number. I'm gonna need for you to lose all connection with this guy if you're not interested in this guy. If you want to be with this guy and you're interested, let me know now <laughs> and we can talk about all of that. You know, you know what I'm saying? And we can move away from each other, whatever. But let me know. So she's like, no, I can. I'm assuming he was younger. Definitely comes off his decision making at this time was a bit naive. As he said, this was 2017. Here's what I find out about women. A lot of women, especially with accountability on the line, like, see, yes, you have some women who get loud, slap a man and do do that type of wild shit. But a lot of straight up confrontation, a lot of women avoid confrontation for the most part, especially the confrontation when when they're wrong and they know they're wrong and there's no way for them to really wiggle themselves out of it. They will avoid that confrontation. He just gave her the open door right then or to end it in that moment. She said, oh, no, I want to be with you. Because her ending it would have been a very hard conversation to have. And she just, even though she likely didn't, didn't want to be with my man. Days later, um, I remember getting home before her. And she's not home yet. But her iPad 
is in the room. I'm trying, I just got home, took a shower, about to take a nap, and I see her iPad is on my nightstand, and then I see this guy, the same guy, number through iMessage popping up on the iPad. I was like, I thought she was, I thought she was gonna stop talking to this dude. Like, no, what's going on? So I tapped on, open the iPad. And she was like, I'm on the way home. Don't text me. Let me text you. And at that moment, that's when I know I got a problem on my hands. Unbeknownst to yourself, your problem started once you found out the first time that she was dealing with somebody else and you guys were newly married and you let her stay. That's kind of when your problem started. As a man, you do not want this problem on your hands. You do not want your woman going behind your back, sneaking, lying, Hell no. and doing all this. And you just got married and trying to work on things to that. And I'm willing to give you another chance. I've dealt with, I've, the worst I've dealt with is like just a woman who's just like lying. Like I could, that was too much for me. Yet alone lying and sneaking behind your back. Man, no, man, that shit would drive you crazy. So when she got home, I like, I didn't know anything. I like, I didn't know anything. She got home, she took a shower, boom, boom, boom. And she said she was going to dinner with one of her friends. I said, all right, go to dinner. Go to dinner with one of the, I don't know if she was with the friend or him, I don't know. But I already had the intel that I need that they was gonna continue to communicate. So then when she left, I opened the iPad up again and I noticed that they was trying to plan going to the mountains together in North Carolina and trying to figure out a way for her to get there and this and that. And I'm like, yo, that's when it hit me. As a man, that's the worst feeling you can ever feel. When you've been disrespected, lied to, betrayed by someone that you love. And I never, ever felt pain like this a day in my life. And still to this day, I still haven't felt a pain that I felt when I saw those messages. And when I realized she was lying, and I never felt that type of pain. At that moment, I just remember dropping down to the bed and just crying, bro. I was crying out of anger, upset, Sad, man. I didn't know how to feel. Sad like, to hear. I, I really didn't know what to do. And I didn't want to talk to anybody about it because what happens in your home stays in your home until it's final. So I had to deal with this by myself. It was just me That's and her. I wasn't part. talking to nobody about it. I was just talking to myself about it. Coworkers was asking, like, why do I look this way and that way? And I could not explain it because it's like, I didn't want to put information out there without things being final, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not that type of dude. And that's why it took me so long to make this video or even tell people what happened because for so long, since 2017, I've lost followers that was connected to me and her because they think that I did something. I've lost some of her friends that was my friends too that think that I did something. You know, like, people automatically assume, oh, if, they divorced or this and that, the man did something. But in this situation, I did not do anything. We couldn't really talk to anyone about it, man. It's sad. I never physically abused her, emotionally abused her. I Like, I've done all I could for this girl, with this girl. I've no never, never, like, so for anybody out there that thought I did something, you know what I'm saying? That's that's y'all, but I'm telling y'all the story. But let's go back. So at this moment, when she got back, she could tell that I was pissed. And I was like, you know something? What's going on? I know that you're still talking to this dude, this and that. We got into a huge arguing match or whatever. So at this moment, I decided to try to figure out a way for us to not be in this situation right now. He's heated in the house, we're arguing, we're looking at each other weird. I didn't like this feeling, I was like, yo, look. And this is probably the worst thing that I could ever do in this situation. I was like, look, I'm gonna get you a hotel room for two, three days. You go there and you think about everything, you know what I'm saying? 
You're saying you're sorry. You're saying you apologize. You're saying that you don't want to talk to this guy. You think about it. And you think about what you actually want. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> I'm not going to hit the soundboard. I, I want to hit the sound a soundboard button, man. But I'm not. Because, again, I'm not laughing at him, man. I'm just laughing at the, him being so naive. That's what I'm laughing at. You send your wife, you already think is cheating on you. If not cheating on you, she is at least talking to another man while she's a married woman. You already know there's cheating intentions at bare minimum. And you send her off to a hotel for the next, what, two or three days on timeout for her to think about what she's done? Dude, she's going to go to the hotel or homeboy going to check in in the room under the name Pound Town because that's what he's going to take her to, bro. Once again, not making fun of him. I'm not about to have you in this house lying and doing all this and going behind my back. I'm going to get you a hotel room for two, three days. You should have sent her home. You got to move out. We done. You know that would have been a right. You go and you think about everything. Think about what has happened, how this is affecting what we have going on. You know what I'm saying? And you think about that. So two, three days come back. She come back to the crib. And I instantly notice another change. She had this look on her face. She's very cold. She's very... Like, this is a side of her that I've never seen before. Like, it's a whole new person. I was like, what happened? Like, what's going on? And then out of prowling and prying and things like that, well, he beat it she up. broke out crying and said she invited the dude to her hotel room. And I was like, why she was like just to talk just to talk and what happened oh he tried to kiss me blah 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 but nothing happened okay all right and now stop the cap why you always lying it was the last straw i was like at this moment we got th this is done we done we are done i cannot do this you know what i'm saying but i did set up uh therapy session for us tried the therapy session that didn't go too well and then eventually she was just like she gonna move out so she moved out the house and as i told you i wasn't making that much so i couldn't afford the payments myself damn so she moved out and then i was forced to move to charlotte with my sister and commute back and forth every single day from charlotte to columbia south carolina to work every single day while she had the means to, you know, afford a little apartment or something like that on her own, I, I couldn't I couldn't afford that at that moment. Um, had credit card bills and stuff like that with our name in it and things like that. And it, it, it was just crazy. So she moved out, got her own place and just left me there. You know what hey. I'm saying? We, and, and I decided, like, you know, that's probably best anyway. But it was no hesitation. She got her place, moved out. She didn't care, bro. Moved in her apartment, and I was commuting back and forth from Columbia to Charlotte to my sister's place, staying on the couch. And I don't know if y'all remember, but I, I took like a three month hiatus from YouTube, trying to get my life together. And then I ended up moving to Atlanta because I took on a new job and I stayed with my cousin for a couple of months till I got on my feet, saved some money and things like that. That was, that was that, man. I was like, what can I do? I was trying to figure out ways, like, what can I do to make the situation better? But it was nothing that I could do. And as a man, as a husband, you always want to try to do your best to make the situation better. No doubt. But I couldn't figure it out. So I tried one more last attempt. I was like, yo, our anniversary is coming up it's like when we first met i want to give one last attempt to this because one thing about me i'm gonna do my best so i know that i didn't give up i didn't give up on a situation i didn't do anything so i was like look for our anniversary we're gonna go down to myrtle beach don't save her, she don't, want to be saved. don't save her bro she don't want to be saved have you not heard project pat and for that weekend, we just gonna vibe. We gonna see what's going on, you know? So I got us a, a resort at Myrtle Beach, had the room decked out nice or whatever, you know, 
had some roses delivered to the room to be there by the time we got there, had some cater catering options and things like that set up so we can go out, eat and things like that. And I could just tell eventually that that was going to be the last time that we had a trip or a, a, um, a time together. Something. She cheated on you, bro. Like, doing all this for somebody who wronged you, man, I, I would never. Shifted, you know what I'm saying? Once that trust is breached, once a mistake and once something like that happens, it's like hard to come back from that. Absolutely. Incredibly hard. It's, it's very hard to come back from that. Like, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big person on respect support trust all that stuff and once that is breached you know you can't really i can't really go back and revert but i tried and i think that's what made me okay with like knowing that i've done all i can in that situation because even though she made a mistake even though this and that happened i was still was willing to try to make things work because as a husband, as a man, you have to try. You know what I'm saying? No matter what, through thick and thin, till death do its part, you gotta try. I agree on most things. I agree on most things. But certain things, man, no, man. If a woman steps out and cheats on you, it's a wrap. She can be friends with a lot of people, even friends to the streets. But one person she can't be friends with is me. It's a wrap. You, you cut out the cancer. You don't let it fester. You know what I'm saying? So I rested comfortably knowing that I tried, you know, and I I'll tried to give it my best. But, um, you know, and, you know, people make mistakes, you know what I'm saying? And it's just a mistake that cost us a huge decision of our lives to, to be divorced and not be together. And, you know, to this day, do we talk every day? No. Do we talk all the time? No. You know what I'm saying? If I seen her, I'll be cordial. Um, but I, I can't envision myself wanting to go through something like that again. And I don't want anybody to go through that again. So probably scared to be married again. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think, you know, after about four years, I'm finally comfortable talking about this because for so long I felt it felt like a failure, you know what I'm saying? And of course she mentioned some things that she felt like were pain points for her. Like she mentioned me once I start my once I started my YouTube channel that I wasn't paying her any attention, which to me is a little bit skewed a little bit because for one I would include her into my vlogs. <laughs> I would try to include her into different processes of the YouTube, like uh, granted, of course, editing takes time and no shit. shooting takes time, but that's not all day. You know what I'm saying? Like editing is. Sometimes when shows on, I wasn't paying attention to the show. I was in my phone. But if it's a show that I don't really like, I'm in there with you. I'm just not paying attention to the show like that. But I'm still right next to you. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm not off in another room watching something else secluded like i'm still in the living room still up under you with you watching the show i'm just on my phone answering the emails or i might bring my laptop down and edit edit on my laptop instead of upstairs or something like that you know so she was bringing up little things like that that's easy man what she's doing is nitpicking little things to try to justify her behavior she's trying to justify her cheating on you by finding little small things to nitpick about oh well, you didn't sit back and watch the real households of montreal or whatever the hell it is now i'm mad that was the issue you didn't pay me enough attention you was too busy recording your youtube videos even the ones that i was in she's looking for anything to justify her actions man and when there's no justification and i feel like if it was truly a problem then it should have been mentioned instead of going out and doing who knows whatever with whoever you know the way my life has been going since that you know once i got on my feet moved to atlanta my life has been skyrocketing you know what i'm saying focused more on my youtube became a creator up next in 2019 for youtube that's what's up had several opportunities with brand partnerships this and that new job new apartment all this like 
And this dude's, and I checked, looked him up. Dude's got like 80,000 subs, so he went in out here. And I would just attest that to God, you know what I'm saying? Even through all that, I prayed, I prayed, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I kept faith that things would be better for me, you know what I'm saying? And even for her, you know, I still want things to go well for her. I want her to find somebody that she could be happy with. And, you know, I want that for her. So I don't have any yeah, animosity I, or any ill will towards her. I'm not mad. I'm not mad at that. I'm kind of the same way. Like, even if I was in this situation, you wronged me. But I find it hard for myself. I find it truly hard for myself to, like, hate people. Like, I can truly think at almost 40 of only two people that I really didn't particularly care for. Two of them in four, in four decades. So I, I understand that as well. I would probably be the same way. Like, yeah, you did me dirty, but I'm not going to wish death on you or anything like that. Other people are like, no, Theo, she can die. <laughs> but since that, I think sometimes God make you go through things so you can see the other side and so you can be a better you. Um because honestly, I don't know if I would be where I'm at today without going through that situation. I'm a better man. I make better decisions. I'm a successful, I'm a young black king out here. You know what I'm saying? And You're getting it. I can't say back then that I was that, you know? I was striving for it, but now I'm here. You know what I'm saying? Like this is everything that I dreamed of, I now have. And, you know, it feels good. Yeah, I just wanted to share this story, man, because I held it in for so long. And I was like, dang, I need to I need to share this story, you know, and appreciate all y'all for listening. If you guys got any videos you would like me to react to, just send them to me. Down below, I'll leave my email as well as my IG. You can hit me in my DMs or just send me an email and let me know, and I'll go ahead and react to it. And uh, shout out to the Coffee Pod with Shisa Zed. I saw his reaction, and that led me to the original content creator, Corey Jones. And uh, shout out to him as, as well, because that wasn't something easy to share, you know, for the entire world to see. But it could be used as a learning tool for younger guys, man, who could be going through a similar situation. I think one of the biggest lessons that I personally take away is not forgiving cheaters, man. I don't believe that anyone who cheats on you can be trusted after that. If you forgive them, they're just going to go around and cheat again. And that, and that also applies if you're helping someone else cheat. If, if you're sleeping with a married woman. Yeah, let's say she does break up her husband and get with you. You think she won't do the same thing to you? And another thing, and I think it's kind of cliche and it's mentioned a lot, but adversity makes you stronger. Man. More times than not, you end up going through tough times and... The end result is you becoming a stronger person, a more competitive person, a more confident person and learning from your mistakes, man. I think that I saw the video. I think this guy was, wasn't even 25 when he got married. I think he was in his early twenties. He was much more naive than he probably is right now and definitely learn from those mistakes and know never, never to make them again. And I think one of the, one of the saddest takeaways um, from this video was the fact that he suffered in silence for a, at least four years, unable to tell anyone about what he was personally going through him also mentioning that close family friends and co-workers could tell that something was visibly wrong with him and him not having the ability to share that is pretty sad it seems like his life turned around and he's become quite productive and quite successful so i wish that man the best guys give me your thoughts let me know in the comments after party i'll see y'all there do better